Hello there. Um, my name is Michael Hansen, uh, and I am pleased to talk to you today a little bit about um, ADHD and its connection to sleep disordered breathing and how that may pertain to craniofacial development. <clears throat> um, I want to talk a little bit about attention deficit disorder, uh, something that uh, Many of us are aware of, often we have family members uh, that struggle with it. We may struggle with it ourselves. It's very likely that we know someone who struggles with it. Um, <clears throat> and it's uh, a very frustrating disorder, something worth looking into here. Uh, the American Psychiatric Association, <clears throat> um, describes ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder as one of the most common mental disorders affecting children and that it and notes that it uh, also affects many adults and symptoms typically include uh, inattention hyperactivity and impulsivity they further divide the this this uh, disorder up into three categories. There's uh, an inattentive type, a hyperactive or impulsive type, and the third type is a combination of the two. <clears throat> and to receive a diagnosis of, uh, of ADHD, you typically have to exhibit uh, six of these symptoms listed here um, for at least six months. And um, once that's been done, you've received this diagnosis. Um, and it is fairly common. The Centers for Disease Control uh, and Prevention um, estimate, based on the 2016 numbers, that uh, 6.1 million children, nearly 10% uh, in the US, have been diagnosed with uh, ADHD. They further go on to say that uh, this is typically treated one of two ways, either uh, pharmaceutically or with behavioral treatment uh, or some combination of the two. Uh, and they note that, that a good 23% of, of those children diagnosed do not undergo any sort of treatment whatsoever. Um, now, interestingly, uh, ADHD has been linked um, by many researchers to um, sleep disordered breathing problems like obstructive sleep apnea. <clears throat> um, one of the great uh, researchers in this field is the late uh, Dr. Christian Gimeno, uh, who worked out of Stanford, um, often known as the father of sleep disorder breathing. And he coined the term uh, obstructive sleep apnea. In his studying of uh, sleep apnea, especially in the pediatric, uh, this particular study was in the pediatric population, he lists a table of uh, syndromes that relate to abnormal uh, sleep um, and and breathing problems. Uh, right there in the middle, he lists uh, um, ADHD, and this has been linked to sleep disordered breathing issues by by many other researchers as well. Um, uh, an interesting review article. Uh, by Dr. Youssef and his team um, reviewed six interventional studies um, and found that attention deficits were reported in up to 95% of OSA or obstructive sleep apnea patients. And that those people that were diagnosed with full syndromal ADHD um, had a high incidence, uh, up, upwards of 30%. Um, incidence of obstructive sleep apnea. 
Yeah, and the other interesting thing that this that this uh, review shows is that all six interventional studies showed that when the obstructive sleep apnea was improved, so were the symptoms associated with the uh, ADHD. American Sleep Apnea Association has compiled several studies as well that suggest that at least 25% of children diagnosed with ADHD may actually have symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea and that uh, their learning difficulty and behavior problems may be due to chronic fragmented sleep. Um, another pioneer in the research field of sleep is a, uh, is a Dr. Stephen Sheldon out of Children's Hospital in Chicago. Um, He's researched for decades on, on um, sleep disorder, breathing, sleep, and, uh, and he is of the opinion that, that uh, ADHD may actually not exist as a separate syndrome, but may in fact be um, the symptoms of uh, sleep disorder, breathing, or fragmented sleep. But probably one of the most solid research uh, papers to date uh, is research done by Dr. Karen Bonick. Um, her study was was extremely well done. Um, it researched in her research she studied eleven thousand children over six years and published her findings in uh, the Journal of Pediatrics. And what she found was that there was a strong, persistent association between sleep disorder breathing and a diminished IQ. <clears throat> or in other words, as she followed these children, she would find that those with sleep disordered breathing problems like apnea would see their IQ diminish over time. Now that's not normal growth and behavior, growth and development for, uh, for a child. Um, for a human, as we grow, we should see our um, IQ increase over time as we develop and eventually level off uh, at, at, at some plane, but we should not see it decrease. Um, she also found that uh, if the child had sleep disordered breathing, um, like apnea, for example, that they ran a risk, a much higher risk of being diagnosed with ADHD, upwards of 50% more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD if they had that sleep disorder breathing problem. And so from our other discussions that we've had, we, we know that <clears throat> um, these sleep disordered breathing problems quite often can be um, structural in nature, uh, that that structural problem is is quite often a functional one, not necessarily a genetic one, um, and that our Western cultural influences have a lot to do with that. Uh, we know that that those things have um, decreased the size of our jaws over the last few hundred years, um, much faster than than genetically should be possible, um, and that that this that decrease in jaw size that we are seeing has a direct relationship on our airway and that we go from a nice wide open airway like we see here with with large normal sized jaws to a very skinny compressed or constricted airway um, in people with underdeveloped jaws. So <clears throat> could it be that this underdevelopment of our jaws could be causing the sleep disordered breathing problems that we are seeing and could it be that this sleep disordered breathing problem may be contributing or even causing the symptoms that we know as ADHD. Uh, I'd like to share with you a, a case of mine that kind of exemplifies a lot of these concepts quite well like you to meet this young man. <clears throat> he came to 
uh, see me at my clinic at age seven and, and uh, presented with, with uh, symptoms of compromised airway, um, including uh, heavy bruxism, which is a clenching and grinding of the teeth, difficulty focusing, excessive daytime drowsiness, uh, snoring. He'd been witnessed gasping for air while he sleeps, um, was a mouth breather, uh, had experienced nocturnal enuresis, uh, irritability, and received a diagnosis of ADHD and obstructive sleep apnea. <clears throat> and uh, you know we can we can see from these pictures that that his jaws are underdeveloped, um, that the the bones are out of alignment. There's a lot of asymmetries. Um, he struggles to keep his lips together. Um, and so we wanted to investigate his situation a little more closely. We had taken um, a CBCT to analyze his head and neck. Um, and that along with um, a cephalometric analysis showed that he did in fact have maxillary hypoplasia, um, or in other words, an underdeveloped upper jaw um, that was causing a, a mandibular discrepancy to the cranial base, or in other words, causing the lower jaw to set back uh, into the head further than ideal. Um, so that cephalometric analysis confirms what we had seen on the CT, underdeveloped upper jaw, hell, uh, trapped back lower jaw, and as we investigate what that does to his airway, we see some pretty drastic results. His pre-treatment airway volume was a, a, a very tiny 4.2 cc's from posterior nasal spine to the inferior border of C3. Um, very, very skinny. Uh, minimal cross-sectional area of just 28 millimeters squared. Um, and a uh, very low tongue posture here to boot. Um, so this poor young man is definitely struggling for space in there. Uh, when we look at that airway <clears throat> um, without the bones in the way, we look at it in this view, kind of from the front, this view from the side. From the front here, we can see um, some, some very large invaginations where he experienced um, tonsillar hypertrophy. In other words, his tonsils were just huge, um, very common in our mouth breathers. Uh, when we breathe through our mouth, of course, we get cold, dry, dirty air hitting the tonsils directly. Um, they tend to not like that and react, become large, um, further constricting the airway. Um, we also noticed <coughs> Um, a constriction in his nasal airway as we look at this from the front, like we see here. Um, and the patient did report uh, difficulty breathing through the nose. So we've taken some, some photos pre-treatment um, to help us understand more the problem. We can appreciate here on this upper left, the upper jaw here is extremely narrow. Um, the, the palate is very high and vaulted, impinging in that, uh, into that nasal airway. We see um, high plaque content modeled teeth with, with decalcification, very common with what we see in our um, mouth breathers. These, these people who breathe through their mouth because of that are also ha um, much more prone to decay. He, uh, you know, has already suffered from that and um, unfortunately had, had even lost a tooth prematurely to decay and severe grinding. The severe grinding that we can see here, um, we can appreciate how severe that is by just looking at how flat he's worn those teeth down. It looks like somebody took a file to him. Um, <clears throat> so definitely some serious dysfunction going on here. Um, his treatment was multidisciplinary and included uh, 
uh, maxillary development with an oral orthopedic appliance, a couple of them actually, um, and lower dental arch expansion. He also went and saw the ENT, had tonsil and adenoidectomy because his symptoms were so severe. Um, and uh, post-treatment, we have uh, the upper row of pictures here are um, his pre-treatment um, photos, uh, lower row of photos are post-treatment. Um, we can see here when we look at the upper jaw, uh, we have good maxillary development, nice wide rounded arch, and the vault of the palate has come down substantially, opening up that nasal airway uh, quite a bit. Um, we can see that the original mandibular deviation, or in other words, his lower jaw, was shifted to his left pretty substantially. If we look at where the midlines line up here and here, and as we made room, we alleviated that entrapment and the lower jaw was able to come down forward and rotate into symmetry um, as evidenced by the, the midline lining up here. Um, <clears throat> we didn't move any teeth to, to get that to line up. That's all uh, bone, uh, specifically the lower jaw shifting and aligning once the entrapment was relieved and it could go where it needed to. Lower jaw or mandibular dental arch was also well developed, nice wide round arch with plenty of room for, uh, for permanent tooth eruption. We can see that we <laughs> gained a substantial amount of space uh, for tooth eruption, lots of space for the uh, for the tongue to now function uh, where it was trapped before, it has a little bigger corral. Um, and uh, we went through, like I said, two appliances to get him to that position. Uh, another interesting finding here is, is when we looked at his nasal base width pre-treatment, to post-treatment, we gained a good three solid millimeters of, of volume in that, uh, in that space, um, vastly improving uh, his ability to nasal breathe. Um, <clears throat> post-treatment, we were able to uh, accomplish a, a 4.6 cc uh, volume uh, in the pharyngeal airway. Um, and uh, minimal cross-sectional area of 200. Um, quite a improvement from where he was um, seen here without the bones in the way. <clears throat> Comparing before and after, that's just a drastic improvement on, on that young man's ability to uh, be able to breathe here. The constriction very much alleviated um, when we compare them side by side, we can see that before his jaw um, was definitely trapped back and up. You can see the angle of the jaw kind of sitting back and up here. Um, whereas after treatment, that lower jaw has translated down and forward uh, into a, a better position for the joint, opening up the airway, helping create space and like I said, we've gone from 4.2 cc's of volume to 14.6 cc's, increased the minimal cross-sectional area from 28 to 200. Um, quite an improvement, but um, and seen here in both the axial views before on the left and after on the right. Um, but, you know, if we look at his profile, uh, we can see you know, that, that lip strain and chin strain, um, nose turned up, um, and uh, mandible kind of sunk back, chin trying to compensate. But post-treatment, we see, you know, very little, if any, muscle strain, um, better lip balance, lip competence. He's not straining to keep those shut. He can nasal breathe. Um, much better. Everything's lining up good. When we look at him from the front, some pretty amazing changes as well. 
um, we can see that as we develop the arches, um, the whole face becomes more symmetrical. The ocular plane here, which was quite out of balance to begin with, has leveled out. Um, you know, we're not looking up his nose quite as much anymore. That has has improved. Um, lip confidence again. He's straining here to keep the lips closed here. Just at rest, they close nicely. Um, very interesting observation here. Uh, if we look at the ear, it was um, very much internally rotated, or in other words, sticking out um, for pre-treatment. As we corrected the, the rest of the bones in there and made room for things, that ear rotated back into position um, more the way it should in a much more symmetrical fashion with the other side. And uh, some of the cranial changes in this case were pretty nice. Um, but beyond that were the changes that uh, occurred just in his day-to-day -day life. Um, this is a uh, survey that his mother filled out um, and we've lined up the pre-treatment responses with the post-treatment responses so you can see them side by side. Pre-treatment, he answered yes to just about everything. You know, snores uh, more than half the time, always snores, snores loudly, uh, loud, heavy breathing, trouble breathing, struggle to breathe. Have you seen your child stop breathing at night? Yes. Um, tend to breathe through the mouth during the day. Uh, dry mouth waking up uh, in the morning. Uh, bedwetting. Um, feeling unrefreshed in the morning. Uh, problems with sleepiness through the day. Um, you know, teachers observe that they, the child appears tired. It's hard to wake them up in the morning. Um, all those were yes before, no after treatment. Um, when we look at um, a few other improvements here, like we said in the last page, uh, vast improvements in snoring, um, no longer uh, witnessed stopping breathing at night. Um, labored or difficult breathing is gone, gasping for air is gone, mouth breathing improved, restless sleep improved, no longer grinds his teeth, no longer talks in his sleep, um, doesn't wake up periodically through the night like he used to, no longer wets the bed, um, and is much less irritable through the day, much less. He headaches have improved, um, throat infections, allergies, um, attention span, focusing, um, difficulty listening, hyperactivity, uh, sensory issues, all improved. Um, the, sorry, the, the areas, interestingly, that, that are not super improved all have to do with <clears throat> tongue function. And as we assess his tongue, we can appreciate that there are some restrictions there and also very likely some, some poor postural habits um, that he's now um, undergoing myofunctional therapy to improve upon. And as that improves, the tongue position will also improve and help maintain these nice wide open jaws that, uh, that he now has uh, and continue to improve the nasal breathing as time goes on. Um, and that's just a, a very uh, good example of, of some of the improvements that can be made with craniofacial development. And um, I feel like the links between um, how our jaws develop, uh, how we breathe, and what that can do to symptoms consistent with attention deficit disorder uh, is very much worth looking into. So I would encourage um, encourage you if you have someone in your family or you know someone who who has these the uh, or has been diagnosed with ADHD 
that they also have an oral evaluation to make sure that that the jaws are fully developed um, and that 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 is not a contributing factor to the symptoms that they're experiencing as well. As always, I thank you for tuning in and uh, watching this and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you.